what I knew. So we went, um, uh, we were boaters, and we went cruising. And uh, we cruised down in Mexico, and then uh, when, in boating, one of the big things is to take your boat to Alaska. And um, we went up to Alaska, and Shara, my wife, didn't go with me, but me and, and some guys. And on the way up there, I started to find out what spiritual growth means, and this verse about Jesus knocking on the door. Because when we went, we got caught in a horrific storm. Now, I've been a boater almost all my life, since I was 17, 16, working on sports fishers and stuff like that. But we got caught in this, this huge, huge storm. Matter of fact, if, just to give you a point of reference, um, I'm going to try this. Okay, now I'm down at your level. When you're driving the boat, okay, and if you'd be sitting on the flying bridge with me, if you look up at the ceiling, and, and you see that's about 22 feet, okay, and then and our boat is, is about 25 feet off the ground, and then if you look and you see maybe to the point where the baptistry is, that's about how the waves come when you're in a storm. So you're, you're looking up, you're in 50-foot waves, they're, they're hanging over your head, and then it gets dark. And, and that, that's when the fun really starts. And we got word that there were 100-foot waves, they're called rogue waves, coming from a different direction. Now, I know we're from Nebraska, and we're into horses and not waves, but a rogue wave, if you're going this way and a 100-foot wave comes this way, you cannot survive it. Okay, so I decided, met the will, to give my life to the Lord. Ah, and I remembered <laughs> that, boy, that verse, that, but the difference was I'm knocking on Jesus' door. Save me, save me, I'll behave. And I knew what it meant to be a Christ follower. Save me, Lord. And so that night, in that bad storm, I gave my heart to the Lord. You know, everything was great. I went, we, we had a pilot house, and there's a bunk in the back. I went to sleep, the bunk. Woke up the next day, and I'm alive. Wow, I lived through this thing. So I'm back on watch, I'm, I'm driving the boat, and I start thinking, you know, I might have jumped the gun here. You know, because, <laughs> you know, when you're a Christian, you can't really do all those things that I like to do. And I'm, as I'm thinking that, all of a sudden, we got picked up by a wave. And it was probably, I don't know, big. Coming from a different direction. And our boat weighed 65 tons, which is a big boat. It threw it on its side, so you don't have any propellers. We call them screws. And you have no rudders. Okay, Basically, you lose all your steering. And you could actually spin the wheel around. And I'm headed down. And in, um, if any of you have ever surfed, and I know surfing Nebraska is a long way from that, but they have this thing that's called purling, and they made a song called Wipeout. And if you're riding a wave, and if, if, you're, if the trajectory of your nose in that wave, you know you're going to purl, and if you purl on a surfboard, the board flips, and that's where that song, you know, Wipeout, probably most of you kids haven't heard it. It's one of the best songs ever written. Anyways, <laughs> a boat will do exactly the same thing. And I saw we were going down, and I saw we were going to pearl. We were going to turn turtle. We were going to flip. And then, Lord, I'm pounding on the door. Okay. <laughs> this will stick just this one time again. And I'm not kidding this time. Okay. We made it. And I'm here today, and yes, it stuck. But I got messed up on taking this verse out of context. So the reason I spend so much time on this is because so many people get this verse completely out of context. Jesus is standing at the door knocking because he wants to have a relationship with you. So if, if we go to um, back to uh, and, and take the scripture in context, let's, let's start at verse... Um, 15, and, and really in uh, um, uh, 14, it, it tells you that, you know, this was the seventh letter to the, um, and this letter was written 
to the uh, Laodicean church. And it says in verse 15, I know your deeds. Hmm. Now, I really like that verse because I'm a behaviorist, right? I know your deeds. Deeds is the sum total of what you think, say, and do. I study people's deeds. So does Jesus. Jesus studies what you do. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. That doesn't sound very favorable, does it? And that doesn't talk very good about a decision kind of a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't want to be lukewarm. Now, um, the Leo, Laodicea was in a valley, and the, uh, the hot spring that fed the church, or fed the church, fed the town, was, was above it. And uh, what happened was the further away the water got from the source of heat, it became lukewarm. So in other words, what they're talking about is this group of people who the further away they get from God, from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the colder they get. And But it doesn't get cold. He would rather have you cold. It gets lukewarm. And it's not a good thing for God to say he wants to spit you out of his mouth. That's not something that I think all of us would like to strive for. So if, if we read on in 17, <clears throat> because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. One of the things, I travel all over the world for Back to the Bible. Matter of fact, my record is I went around the world in seven and a half days, and I felt I wasted two days. Okay, so I, I do a lot of traveling. And one of the things I see, not only in the United States, but all over the place, is this thing called prosperity teaching. And you ask, you talk to God, kind of like me when I was first married. Talk to Char, this is what I want, now do it. And in prosperity teaching, which is prevalent around the world, it's that. You talk to God, you tell God what you need, and He delivers it. There are people that it appears that this works. Matter of fact, I hear all the time, and in our surveys and all of this stuff, I see people saying, boy, God has blessed our lives. Man, this is wonderful. We are blessed. We are so blessed. Well, what this is saying, the Laodiceans were saying, man, we are so blessed. Well, it's not like they're a bunch of idiots. No, no, the Laodiceans are like most of us in America today. Just because you're comfortable doesn't mean that everything is hunky-dory. Okay, and for you, if you're under 23, look up hunky-dory in Google and you'll find out what it means. So if it's not about our comfort, then, then what is it about? How do we win the day spiritually? Well, if you go on in, in uh, 18, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. So what they're talking about here is not gold, gold. They're talking about salvation. Yes, you have to be saved. Yes, you have to make a decision. But in my mind as a behaviorist, not as a theologian, but if you've made a decision and your behavior doesn't change, I wouldn't want to bank my salvation on your, what you consider being saved. In other words, if it's just about a decision and you're, you've, you know, you've thought, well, I want to get there by my chinny chin chin, you know, and that's it, I'm going to live my life the way I want to, I'm not going to listen to God, I don't care if, if the only way I hear from God, I don't have time to read the Bible, 